welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kabitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to thereasonswesmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. This is episode number 648. It's the 12th show in a series of all pre-recorded shows due to the coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak. And there is no question of the day. However, I did get word from the station management that they're going to allow me to come back into the studio starting July 12th and do live shows. So that means you'll have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis soon. Okay, so stay, uh, stay tuned for that. Today, I have an interview with my new dental hygienist. Her name is Galila Kaveta. Before we get started, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Also, remember that all past episodes, complete with video, are available at thereasonswesmile.com. Before I continue with the show, let me explain why I have a new hygienist. Christine, who was my hygienist before, and actually she did an interview for this radio show for me, has decided she is not comfortable yet coming back. She is kind of afraid of being a hygienist at the moment with the coronavirus, COVID-19, and she does have an elderly mother at home and a special needs grandson, so you can kind of understand that. And she did say that if she ever goes back to dentistry, she will be at my office. So hopefully she'll get to realize that everything is okay after all, and that she'll be back. But in the meantime, we have a new hygienist. Her name is Galila. I'm going to ask you, Galila, to say your last name. Kabeda. Say that again. Kabeda. Kabeda. Actually, I can say it just fine. I just love hearing her say it with her cute little accent. So Galila came to us. As luck would have it, we found this awesome young lady, Galila. But let me just throw it out here. Does working as a dental hygienist during the pandemic make you nervous? It does not, to be honest. Just because, especially in this office, I feel super safe because we take all these precautions. You know, we wear two masks and, you know, the, you know, face shields and everything and the gowns that we wear and we change between every single patient. Um, I feel very confident that, you know, I'm not putting myself at risk or my family when I go home. You know, we all go home and as, as soon as we get there, we shower, we take off our shoes, we leave our shoes outside. So I feel pretty safe and I think it's safe for the patients as well because, you know, we have the mask so they can't get anything from us. Right. And I appreciate that and we work hard at that. And so the fact that you feel comfortable makes me happy. Good. <laughs> Awesome. I know where you're from, but I like hearing you say it. So tell me where you're from. I'm from Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Okay. <laughs> she says that really well. Tell me what it was like growing up in Ethiopia. Um, it was pretty much normal. I guess it's normal to me because that's all I've known. I went to an all-girls Catholic high school and middle school and kindergarten. So I've been to the same school my whole entire life. I have older siblings. I have two older brothers and two older sisters. So I was the youngest. Still are the youngest? Yes. <laughs> yes. I have two younger cousins which are, you know, considered my sisters. So I do have younger siblings, I guess, but you know, I'm the youngest and it's been great. Cool. So tell me about your older brothers. Well, first of all, is it boy, boy, girl, girl, you? It's girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. Oh, wow. That's pretty good planning. Okay. <laughs> so tell me, what are your, what are your uh, siblings' names and what do they do? My oldest sister, her name is Goodness, and she owns her own business. Doing what? She owns a burger joint. Really? What's it called? Fiji Burger. Cool. Okay. Okay. Go on. Uh, and then my brother, um, he works in management. He works for Deloitte, 
in Nairobi, Kenya. And then my sister, Mahalit, she is an accountant for um, a company that imports computers. And my brother is a software engineer. My brother, Haile Mikhail. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay, so how far of a drive is it to Kenya from Ethiopia? I've never driven there, but the flight is like an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, an hour and 15 minutes. So an hour flight is like Chicago, like six hour drive maybe. I guess so, yeah. yeah but well. we don't have highways in Ethiopia, so you'd be driving kind of like in the back road. So I don't think you'd be getting there in six hours, probably longer. <laughs> okay, so more like three times that, I'm guessing. Quite possibly. Okay, well that's very interesting. So what does your dad do for a living? My dad was a mechanical engineer. For a company we would know or not? Uh, no, it's, you know, local companies in Ethiopia. He worked for a tire company and then a textile company. Okay. And what does your mom do? She was a stay-at-home mom. Well, that's special, right? That's really neat. Very, very special. Yeah. Yeah, we were just talking about that, how it's a privilege to be able to stay home. It used to be considered, I don't know, something people would look down upon, right? But not anymore. Definitely not anymore. Right. It? And I remember when our oldest was born, I think when he was nine months, we figured out a way for my wife to quit work so that she could stay home and watch him because we decided that we didn't have children so someone else could raise them. We had them so that we could raise them, or she could. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So, okay, now, Ethiopia, and I don't say it the same way you do. Say it again. Ethiopia. You have to, like, shorten the O. Uh, yeah, but the P is really a P. I don't know if you can say that. Do it again. P. It's like a T? Uh, it's like a P. It's like with your lips. Oh, a P with your lips closed or something? Yeah. Okay. Now, Ethiopia, it's primarily people of color, right? Correct. Is there a Caucasian population at all? No. Okay. So we were talking the other day about what's going on in the world right now, and I asked you if there was racism in Ethiopia. Is there? I wouldn't say there's racism, but I mean, you know, like there's different tribes. Maybe there's, you know, differences within those people, but not racism. Okay, so they would maybe have some miscommunication between tribes, and maybe one tribe was in power, and they wouldn't be nice to the tribe that wasn't? That's correct, yes. Okay. But then does that change periodically as people get voted in and voted out? Is it similar to the United States? Um... So the party that's been ruling has been the, the same tribe for the past, like, 20-something years. So, but now we have a new prime minister that's trying to change all of that and that's trying to be more inclusive. But there's been a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, trouble in the country because the party in power wasn't trying to give up their power, I guess. Oh, okay. Now, was your family from the tribe that was in power? No. It's radio. You can't just shake your head. <laughs> <laughs> She's shaking her head. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Okay. And so then, you know, the question becomes, and I asked you this too, once you came to the United States, did you experience any racism? Yes. Not so much when I was in Maryland, because the part of Maryland that I am from is not like that very, very diverse. I went to a very diverse high school. But when I came to college, when I went to YSU, it was not as diverse as Maryland, so, you know, people... Why, she was Youngstown State University? That's correct. Okay, so you were in Ohio for college, okay. Very interesting. So I was actually saddened to hear that, because I guess I thought, I'm not sure what I thought, but it felt like, as an immigrant, you aren't part of that discussion, right? Yeah, that's what you think, but I mean, I still identify myself as an African-American, so, and people do look at me as an African-American, which is what I am, so you still get that stereotype, you still think, people think you're in college because of affirmative action and not because you worked hard or you don't deserve the scholarships that you have, so, you know, that still sucks, but <laughs> it's still very... It does suck. <laughs> yes, it definitely does. And I apologize for my people. <laughs> <laughs> it's not your fault. But you know, I'm an immigrant too. We talked about that. Yes, yes. Yeah, so we're similar. I came over. I was only three and a half. You were, what, 17? That's correct. Okay. That's why you have a little bit of an accent still. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> but you can hardly tell. You do great. I don't know uh, what your native language would be. Could you say I love going to the dentist in your native language? Dentist camero Oh, that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> 
And so you were 17, and that was right after high school, correct? Yes, I was still in high school. Okay. And what made you want to come to the United States? Better education, better opportunities. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Are women treated the same in Ethiopia as the men? Would you have had the same opportunities as any of the boys? I would have, yes. Okay, because I had a girl on my show from India, and she would not have had the same opportunity. Yeah, it's not really like that in Ethiopia. It's, you know, pretty much equal. Women and men, you know, obviously the traditional gender roles of, you know, marriage and things like that are different, but education-wise and opportunity-wise, it's the same. Okay, well, that's neat. So you were at a private school, Christian school, Catholic school, Catholic. Correct. Your entire schooling. That is correct. Was how many buildings was it? Oh, it was a lot. It was was this huge compound, and we had a separate compound for the kindergarten to fourth grade, and then fifth grade. No, no, actually, from kindergarten to second grade, they had their own compound, and then third and fourth grade had their own. Fifth to eighth grade had their own, and then the high schoolers had their own. So it was pretty big. Was it expensive for your parents? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you're lucky then. Very lucky. Very yeah. fortunate. You thank them often. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it looks like it's time for us to go to a break. Okay. And I'm very interested in what you're saying. I think this is awesome. It's very cool. And you can stick with me, right? We can talk more after the break. Yes, indeed. Okay. Thank you. You're listening to The Reasons We Smile, episode number 648, here with Galila Cabeta, my new hygienist, and we'll be right back. You won't believe it though, I want to hear your mind, and there's nothing else hidden in the world tonight. She said, people don't take the time, hey, people don't take the time. Hey, what's going on? It's Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. You can look for my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavico on the CBS television network where I play Danny on the hit soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavico, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko. Guess what? We're open and here to take care of all of your dental needs. It's been a long time coming, but in the words of Governor DeWine, it's full steam ahead. During the time we were closed, we were acquiring PPE. We were developing a plan to keep you safe. We've had Zoom meetings, a very active text string, and in addition to going into the office to take care of emergencies, we've been in complete contact with each other, so we'd be ready. Are you ready? We bet your teeth and gums are. Don't forget, your teeth haven't been cleaning themselves. Your cavity haven't been getting any smaller and your gum disease hasn't been healing itself and if you haven't had x-rays in a while or an exam there could be a lot of things going on in there that you're not aware of because let's face it cavities don't hurt even abscesses don't hurt until they get really bad call us at 614-262-9588 that's 614-262-9588 or go to drkvitko.com that's d-r-k-v-i-t-k-o.com Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. Dr. Kavitko, let's go! Yeah! Hi, I'm Johanna, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavitko & Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavitko for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavitko, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavitko and Associates today. 614-262-9588. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. All right, if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode 648. With me today is Galila Kabeta, and she is my new dental hygienist. And you're going to love her when you come and meet her. She's awesome. She's got, I don't know, just pretty eyes and bubbly and happy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and so how was the process of getting a visa? Uh, it was very, very long. But, um, you know, once it happens, it happens. But it took at least like two years. I'm not sure if it was longer, but possibly two years. 
two years. Did your parents know that in advance and they applied early? No, no one knew how long it was going to take. I don't think you know how long these processes take. I think it's just case by case. And is your visa a student, a work, or a permanent? Permanent, actually. I'm a citizen. When did you become a citizen? When I came to this country. Oh, right then? Yes. Okay, because I became a citizen because I was only two and a half, so it wasn't until I turned 18 that I went and became a citizen. But part of getting you in the country was the, all the same paperwork to make you a citizen? Yes. I believe so. Did you have to take a test? No. Really? I had to take a test. That's not fair. <laughs> okay. So two years. That's a long time. Now, you were scheduled to get married, and then the pandemic hit. Tell me about that. We went through all these plans and details about flowers and decorations and the guest list. And in February and even in March, I was still planning. I didn't think things would change as dramatically as they did now. But, you know, we were planning two weddings. We were planning one in Ethiopia, a destination wedding. And then we were going to have a reception here. But all of that changed so because what's your wedding date? It was supposed to be June 4th. June 4th. And when did you actually get married? Got married May 8th. Okay, so you moved it up because nobody's coming anyway? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. And so you were telling me you took a test on the day you were getting your uh, getting married, you were getting your hair done, and you're taking a test? That's exactly right. What was the test on? It was my biology final exam. I'll be there for dental hygiene? No, no, for your, you're getting your degree and you want to go on and become a dentist, right? That's correct, so just a prereq for dental school. Wow, because I took, I think I told you, mm -hmm. I took physics and physics lab one on the Friday before my wedding and then got married and then went to SeaWorld and then the following Monday was back in Physics 2 and Physics 2 lab. So, <laughs> been there, done that. <laughs> but you wound up making your own wedding cake and everything. Now, how many people came and like who were they? It was just immediate family. We were only allowed to have 10 people in the church, but we had some family, most of my husband's family, they were just in the car because we were Facebook living it. So they were watching from their car and they drove around and they had posters for us and they waved hello, but that was just immediate family. Oh my goodness. On, on one hand, that's terrible. On the other hand, you'll have that story to tell forever. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you'll tell your kids and your grandkids. And, but I feel so bad. I felt bad that you really didn't have a proper wedding. And so, but we got to meet your husband. What's his name? Anthony Hines. Anthony Hines. And he goes by Anthony, right? He goes by Ant. <laughs> that's right. You told me that. He goes by Ant. Okay, that's weird. A-U-N-T or A-N-T? A-N-T. Oh, like the ant that crawls on the floor. <laughs> Why does he go by Ant? I don't know. <laughs> ant Heinz. That's like, I don't know. There's there's a cake company that's got Heinz in it. Duncan Heinz? Mm, I've never heard of that. Yeah, I think it's Duncan Heinz. Well, they maybe don't have them in Ethiopia. They definitely don't. <laughs> okay, so Aunt Heinz, and you're going to change your name and make it easier for me to say it, right? That's correct. <laughs> When's that going to happen? Pretty soon. I'm trying to figure out how to change my name on my social security. Apparently, you're supposed to do that first. Oh, really? You do that first? That's what they told me at the BMV. What if it'll take two years like it did to get the visa? <laughs> I really hope that does not happen. <laughs> yeah, I think every woman goes through that or most, and so you probably, maybe somebody will call in and, or write us and tell us how to do that. Okay, what, is, what does aunt's parents do? What do aunt's parents do? The grammar is not <laughs> falling off my lips very well today. His mom works at I Know I Can. She helps students go into college and helps them with the application process and financial aid and all of that. She works at, say that again, where she works? I Know I Can. Oh, I Know I Can. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. And then your dad? I mean, his dad? <laughs> his dad, I think, works for a tire company. I think he's an accountant. <laughs> he's an account that counts the tires? <laughs> that's, I think he's an accountant. That I think that's what I know. <laughs> I think we figured out, was it Yokohama or something? Um, Kemba? Yeah, that's right. Ken Kenda. 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 Yes. yes. I, that's right. Because I think I know the owner or the owner's son or something of Kenda just by chance. And yeah, we had that conversation. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Now, when we come back, I want to ask you, there's some more, some more questions. The questions are going to be give you a chance to develop your answer if you haven't already. Where do you see yourself in three years? Where do you see yourself in five years? What's been your biggest surprise living in the United States? What's been your biggest disappointment living in the United States? And then there are a couple others which we don't have to, you probably don't have to ponder. All right, so you're going to stay with us. You're going to ponder your answers, right? Yes. 
Okay, you're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, here with Galila Cabetta, soon to be Galila Hines, if she can figure out how to make that happen, and we'll be right back. You can take me as I am, die just a little bit. I don't know who to be, I'm a paper cup, baby, of the sea. I know you see it too, cause you're too much for me. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kawiko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Weigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? Okay, we're back. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for hanging in there. With me is Galila Cabetta. She is my new dental hygienist. She's awesome. You're going to love her. So make your appointments because she's willing and able and loves what she does, right? Yes, indeed. Yeah, she really seems to like her job, which is great to hear. So I said, where do you see yourself in three years was going to be the next question. In three years, I see myself either working or in dental school. Okay, so if you're working, it's still here, right? Of course. <laughs> no, of course. Or if you get into that, when would you be eligible to apply to dental school? So with everything changing right now, I still have not taken my DAT. Okay, and DAT stands for Dental Admission Test for those of you that didn't know. So I'm just waiting to see when I'll be able to take that and when I'll be able to apply. Okay, and I think if you're applying to Ohio State, I think they accept you, once you get in, it's like for the following year, right? Mm -hmm. That's correct. So we're looking at at least two years from now before you could even start. That's very correct. So you have two years to come in and enjoy uh, Galila as your hygienist at least. <laughs> and then where do you see yourself in five years? I think I might know where this answer is going. <laughs> um, ideally in dental school. Um, and yeah. Okay. So hopefully in dental school and uh, depending on when you get in, you could be one year from graduating in five years. That's right. If you got in in two years and it's a four-year program, cool. That's right. Maybe you can come back and be a dentist here, too. I would love that. That's awesome. That's great. So let's see here. The next question I had, I think I told you, is what's been your biggest surprise living in the United States? I mean, uh, compared to what you expected, I guess. Mm, you're going to meet all sorts of people. You know, there are going to be people that um, are going to challenge how you think, are going to um, think way different than you, um, have the same beliefs or, like, extreme beliefs. But it's just a tr truly a land of many, many different people. And I think that was one of my surprises. So more so, so at home, it's more homogeneous but in Ethiopia. But here, you don't know who you're going to meet and what they're going to think. So it kind of have to broaden your mind, don't you, to understand how to relate to everyone. That's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. So I always try to kind of learn a little bit about my patients. We'll ask them questions about their life. I'm just a curious person, but it's really neat to learn what makes the world go round. You know, it really is. That's true. That's very true. And then your biggest disappointment. What's been your biggest disappointment about coming to you? We came here for the land of opportunity to have a better life. So far, so good, it looks like to me. But have you been disappointed in anything yet? Yes, the fact that racism still exists. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, I had like this epiphany I did not realize because I don't practice racism and I just assumed other people didn't too. Right. You but know. sadly, that's not the truth. Yeah, and I didn't realize that. I thought I thought these were isolated in the incidents. I really did. Because I I feel like I'm colorblind. I relate to people of all walks of life, you know, and treat everybody like gold, I think. I try. And so when I heard of these episodes, I thought, well, this has got to be like an isolated incident. And now I'm finding out 
I was wrong. Yeah, that's very sad, but very true. Did you know about it when you were in Ethiopia, that it might be over here? Not at all. No, okay. I thought this was a thing of the past. Me too. I thought, you know, everyone was more aware and more accepting of people, but that's not how it is. Yeah, well, hopefully it's going to get there now. I think I think that um, George Floyd might be, like, said this to my wife the other day, like a Rosa Parks moment. That's what I read somewhere too. Yeah, that's very interesting you said that. You read that? Yeah, I, I read that um, the lawyer of the girl that recorded the incident said she's the Rosa Parks of her time because she captured such a moment. Interesting, because I just came up with that on my own and someone yeah. else thought the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting. So a hundred years from now, they'll be uh, remembering George Floyd like we remember Rosa Parks now. That's right. Okay, now, how have you found your experience working at Dr. Kavitko and Associates? That's like a loaded question, but you can <laughs> feel free to be honest. I know, I know. It's been great. Everyone's super, super nice and super helpful. Um, in some offices, it's easy to be in there and feel lost and not know what you're doing. Um, if, you know, people aren't willing to help you or they're not nice. Um, but everyone has been super, super accepting and helpful. Everyone's always available, and I have a lot of questions. But, <laughs> um, you know, everyone has been answering my questions. No one looks like they're being bothered by my questions. And you guys even threw me my bridal shower, which was beautiful. So I'm very thankful to be here and, you know, to build the relationships that I'm building with the patients and with you guys too. Well, thank you. Yeah, I think we have nice patients. And you use the word nice, and I think I told you I hire nice people because I can't teach somebody to be nice if their parents didn't, but I can teach them the part of their job they maybe are struggling with. I can teach them that. I can teach them how to take a better x-ray, for example, but I can't teach them how to be nice. That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> but I think we have nice patients as well. Okay, any words of wisdom for people who are listening? It could be dental, it could be anything. Um, life changes so quickly, so just enjoy every single moment. I like that, I like that, yeah. Because you don't know when you may not have more of them, right? Exactly, and not every single detail about everything matters. Just like my wedding, you know, none of the flowers that I picked out or the napkins I picked out mattered. What matters is really the marriage. So it's just like, you know, look at the big picture, not stress about small details that are trivial and not really contribute to your life. That's great advice. It really is. And I like, I have this, this phrase that I use that uh, things are never so bad they couldn't be worse. And so rather than dwelling on how bad things are going in your life, think about how much worse they could be, which will help you understand how good they really are. Exactly. That is well said. <laughs> so thank you so much for your time, Galila. I really, really appreciate it. And hopefully we'll have many, many, many more months and years of, uh, of enjoying each other's company. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you again. You're welcome. And that's Galila Cabetta. Isn't she special? I'm really, really happy that we found her. And I do love that little accent. And I think we're going to have a great time. I think you're going to like getting to know her. She does an awesome job as a hygienist. The teeth are clean when she's done. And people are telling me that she's gentle. So you can rest assured there. We have had a couple of people who said, well, the one woman said that she definitely wanted Christine and wanted to know if Christine was coming back. And I said, well, you know, she might. And you might like Galila better. And after the appointment, she came up to me in the hall and she whispered, she goes, I did like her better and I requested her next time. <laughs> so I think that was really cool. Well, looks like that is all the time we have today. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. Before we go, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kivitko. And if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Remember that all past episodes complete with video are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. This is Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to TheReasonsWeSmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614 262 9588 or send an email to speak